this is your first AMA. We're going to get into how they work and why we do these. But um, first, a little bit more about us here at Equilibrium. We're a decentralized framework for generating asset back stable coins and building the next generation of DeFi, decentralized finance, applications. And we host these sessions every two weeks, um, AMA or Ask Me Anything sessions with those in the community, partners of ours, and today a very, very special guest to help provide an understanding of what's happening in this ever quickly changing world of decentralized finance to the world of blockchain and beyond um, to give you education and insights on what more you can do, what's to come, and, and how, to, uh, how to stay involved. Now, if this is your first AMA session with us, uh, here's how it works. So for the next 60 minutes, myself and our awesome esteemed guest will be taking your questions live um, on everything and anything uh, between DeFi, blockchain, and whatever else you guys want to talk about. Uh, and we'll try to answer those in real time as they come up in the conversation. If they don't, we'll save them to the end. And if we can't get to them all, apologies in advance, but we'll try to answer them offline. Uh, so if you do have a question as we're talking, feel free to drop it in our Telegram chat uh, or send it in on social media as well. And our team, Mike, Emily, and the rest will be flagging those for our guest and myself. At the very end of the show, to have a little bit of fun and to thank you, the community, for participating, we'll select the best question, our guest will, we'll select the best question and we'll give you a little reward and uh, give you a big thank you for uh, participating today. Now, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Equilibrium's founder and CEO, Mr. Alex. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you very much, Kyle. I'm so excited to be on the show. Uh, actually, if you remember, we were thinking about this AMAs. We didn't expect even, you know, team members to participate in it because we wanted to all these high-profile guys, well-known community members to, to hop on the show with you, to chat, uh, you know, exciting things about DeFi, crypto markets and everything. But um, today we're making the exception, right? And we have we have very, very heavy reason for that, <laughs> right? Aren't we? <laughs> we do, we do, we do. Yeah, and the reason is <laughs> the first anniversary of USDT. So basically this week we are celebrating one year after we actually announced and uh, presented USDT to the world. <laughs> I'm super excited, by the way. <laughs> How fast time flies. I mean, one year to the day, or just a few days, uh, since we launched, and it's been a rocket ship uh, up, up, and up ever since. So many cool things to talk about today. I know you've got more announcements, and a big happy birthday to the entire team. Um, happy birthday or anniversary. We're going to go with both. Um, double celebration. To, to you and the entire team and, and also to the community. I mean, everything that you as the community have put in, your comments, your feedback, your participation, everything has fed this company to be what it is today. So big, big thank you. Alex, you got so much to talk about. You told me offline, you got big updates, big announcements. We got a ton of questions that have already come in. Before we do, let's just go to the base. How did you get started in this space, this world of decentralization? When did you get started? How? Why now? Um, and then let's go from there. Right. So uh, if, um, if to start from, from the very, very beginning, um, I'm um, just introduce myself. Uh, I'm uh, um, uh, actually engineer by training, engineer in applied mathematics. Uh, graduated uh, in 2000, 2006, uh, and uh, since that time, I mostly was involved in uh, different uh, different projects uh, and was um, uh, responsible for you know uh, architectural side of things uh, of uh, building uh, the technology. Um, uh, past uh, eight years, I was uh, mostly be focusing on. Um, um, fintech projects. Uh, I've 
built several several payment gateways. I was involved in, in uh, not just you know managing this stuff and setting up all the business uh, side of things, but also in development. So uh, I remember when I was coding myself, uh, rolling out some some technical solutions. But uh, th- there was there was there was interesting but painful, I would say. Uh, at, at some point, at point, I decided. I actually realized that I'm uh, kind of wasting. In my time, because uh, if, if you hire something to do coding for you, you understand that you can you can focus on um, a little bit more important things from business perspective, right? <laughs> so yeah, and uh, at at some point, I um, actually like since I was in more in on 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 kind of. Uh, on the dark side, on the side of traditional finance, <laughs> on on uh, on the banking system and everything, I realized that it was actually quite interesting times. You know, it it was like back uh, in the 2015, 2014 something. If you if you if you if you remember, um, even the regulation was not that strict those times. I re- specifically in Europe, by the way. So you could you could do different tricky things, uh, moving money around. Um, setting up quite, you know, interesting payment solutions that actually um, fits um, different different market segments. Those times, I, ha- I actually was running uh, the must pay out solution. If you are familiar with, with uh, this type of things, and, yeah, uh, I, I, yeah, exactly. So, and uh, th- there were there were quite a lot of um, opportunities uh, those times on the market. So basically. Uh, more operations were allowed in payment systems and Visa, Mastercard. You could uh, uh, so ju- just uh, um, if to speak of um, our must pay out gateway, we actually could leverage um, OCT rails in in Visa and Mastercard. For now, it's almost almost impossible. So you, you cannot set up all OCT rails uh, now in Visa Mastercard with the. Uh, the same way that we could do in 2015. I remember there was the company, by the way, called um, Manipola. They were they were uh, based in Czech Republic, and actually they were serving uh, BTC exchange at some point. <laughs> they, they were allowed to do everything, every every, every kind of thing. So <laughs> so it, it was quite interesting times. But you know, at some point, regulations uh, regulation overall started uh, becoming. Uh, more and more strict, um, and um, actually, I realized that um, everything is moving to crypto. Everything is moving to crypto because uh, you have more freedom. You 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 can uh, you can actually do um, different sort of operations there uh, without uh, without being on the radar of uh, regulators. Uh, I mean, not just. You know, from the perspective of some 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 controversial activities, but regular ones, right? Um, <clears throat> so, um, uh, by the way, just uh, for also for your understanding, I'm I was familiar with uh, with crypto space uh, for quite a long time. Um, my friend actually uh, told me about Bitcoin. Uh, I think something around 2011 or something. Uh, it, it almost was the right time to buy Bitcoin to get <laughs> into Bitcoin, <laughs> to jump on that and actually spend on your holdings on that. But uh, you know, I was uh, I, w- I was actually taking uh, all these kind of things quite skeptical those times. Unfortunately, <laughs> I think a lot of people were. You know, I remember discovering it was well in 2011, and and someone told me, "Hey, you have to get this," and I'm like, "Oh, what? What is this?" <laughs> And, and at the time, I think it was a, about a, around a hundred dollars. And you're looking at this like, you know, what, what am I spending a hundred dollars on? It, it wasn't maybe, understood. Maybe ten dollars. <laughs> yeah, 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 ten dollars. Yeah, my my apologies. Yeah, but still, even then, it was like, what is this? Right? There wasn't much talk about it unless you were deep in the space. So it sounds like you were, um, and, and even still, then skeptic. Uh, yeah, exactly. And you know, uh, moreover, I was I was the engineer, so basically, I was I was um, quite familiar with the with the tech side. Uh, I actually took that quite serious, but overall concept to me was a little bit, you know, unproven those times. You know, right. and uh, but um, in 2016, everything uh, 
actually was becoming more and more clear uh, that everything ex- actually is moving this direction, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and those times we decided to co-found Changely, which was uh, actually, but for now, it's one of the biggest um, instant exchanges for crypto on the market. However, for now, I'm not involved in the operational side of things. Uh, those times I was, but now I'm not. Um, uh, and in 20, I guess, 17th, uh, I actually was, um, I was, I was getting into the space of, uh, decentralized applications. Uh, I was building the team, uh, the technical, uh, team primarily. Um, and those times we actually kicked off with the development of, um, Actually, the first uh, lending platform in crypto space, I think, overall. <laughs> you know, I mean, decentralized yeah. one. Because, uh, yeah. uh, you know, even, even the word uh, DeFi didn't hit our vocabulary those times. No. You know? it, it didn't exist. Right. Uh, even, so, the so we, de- even the word decentralized was hardly used, right? It was still a term that was beginning to get traction on a, on a more frequent basis. Uh, right. It, it, right. It was more crypto. Like that was the term, right? Crypto, cryptocurrency, crypto, crypto, crypto. It, it wasn't. It, it was. It was. It was something abstract, you know. Because those times, if you remember the crypto landscape, uh, there were just centralized exchanges, uh, almost no DAXs. Uh, nobody actually gave a shit about decentralization the way they 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 actually care right now, right? Because right. everybody is, is talking decentralization. Uh, the the level of decentralization and everything. Those times, even if something was even working, that was okay enough, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> the, gear, the gears move. The gears process. Everything's working. We're we're good. We're good. Right. 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 Uh, so so actually, um, hopefully. Time changed, uh, and yeah. uh, every, everything is uh, digging deeper into details, figuring out what's going on on technical side. Everybody actually got more educated, by the way, uh, more aware of technologies, of uh, smart contracts, what exactly this is, uh, how how it works. Um, you know, so from 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 this perspective, uh, for now we're. Um, on absolutely different stage of uh, of development of the entire ecosystem, for sure. Right. Well, and so so that leads me to one of our first community questions because they are on fire right now coming in. So um, <laughs> before we get to some of the cool announcements, and I think this will be a good setup for you, is um, uh, Vict TB, TBT uh, sends out the the first question of what was the vision of Equilibrium and how back when, when you founded it, and how does it look now? Right? How did the market change from where the focus was in the beginning to where it is today? Look, so um, in, in the very beginning, when we were just thinking of how to uh, build equilibrium, uh, we were uh, considering ourselves as uh, the technology basis for DeFi projects. Mm-hmm. And we were, um, so th- those times we actually saw the obvious gap for uh, DeFi instruments on uh, certain blockchains, specifically on EOS. To those, to those times we actually had, I would say, quite painful experience with building things on Ethereum. Uh, not, ju- not, not because that we, were not succeed- we didn't succeed or it was uh, something that we could not uh, handle. But, um, you know, when you're building things on Ethereum, uh, you're you're actually um, meeting a lot of constraints there uh, from, from just 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 from technical perspective, and we actually decided to um, switch to more scalable and uh, more uh, kind of convenient um, ecosystems from from developer perspective. Uh, first of all, um, and actually, EOS was a quite easy choice at those times because um, um, it was really exploding in terms of. Uh, number of users, uh, active users, uh, teams that were working on um, uh, different projects and development side and everything. Um, and we decided to, 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 to play this game and to, to start building first models of uh, Equilibrium on EOS. And actually, we're, we're not regretting about that, for sure, because uh, yeah. EOS is definitely, um, like from my perspective, uh, is one of the 
best um, ecosystem for for dev developers for sure. Um, and why is that? So you know, EOS versus Ethereum. We've talked about it almost every AMA session we've had uh, mm -hmm. to date, and you and I have had tons of off offline conversations about this. But why? Right? Why is EOS over Ethereum, or is there a way that the two come together? Uh, look, I think I think that um, so, so it's um, it's a kind of common uh, understanding that you when you're choosing um, EOS and Ethereum for some reason you're you're making the trade off between centralization or decentralization. I would say that it's not it's not correct because uh, actually like formally EOS is very decentralized system. Right, because because of all this uh, kind of uh, block producer structure, uh, DPoS consensus. Yes, it's 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 in some in some portion it's a little bit more centralized than Ethereum for sure. Uh, but again, when you're choosing between uh, the speed of transactions and decentralization, you can pick just one item. You know, uh, um, uh, but again, so I'm I'm not saying that EOS is, is centralized system for sure. It's decentralized. Um, so um, obviously, uh, obviously, the cost of transaction is uh, very important. Uh, for example, um, if not just right now getting into weeds uh, uh, of the situation of March 12th, but mm -hmm. uh, again, the uh, you cannot afford these kind of price fees that we currently have on use if you are building some stuff on Ethereum. For sure, it's it's impossible due to the gas costs and everything. Right, right. So, um, from 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 technical perspective, imagine on use you have all functional tables on blockchain. So you basically you are storing data in tables with indexes. Mm -hmm. On Ethereum, it's it's a dream. You 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 just have mapping, and you need to to browse this mapping, and it's very 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 painful thing. So you you you. You always need to invent something, you know, to optimize your processes, to optimize your gas costs and everything. So, yeah. Okay. Um, makes it makes it makes sense. So, um, I'm gonna go rapid fire on you because these questions are just coming in faster and faster. So, um, an old friend and our very first guest on the show, uh, Eves, sends in a question: Where does your passion come from? You know, some building something like ah. Equilibrium, the challenge you and have put onto the team, it, it's something big. Where does the passion come from? Um, so, if if it comes to my personal passion, uh, yeah. not just you know related to Equilibrium, but uh, uh, to passion uh, for building projects or doing business, for me, obviously, the passion is coming from. Um, from some stuff that can can be done better. If I see that I can improve something uh, and it actually challenges me, for sure mm -hmm. that's something that uh, that uh, inspires me to, to 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 jump on that and uh, to get things fixed. So that, 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 that is where my passion is coming from. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in terms in terms of uh, in terms of equilibrium. I would say that uh, we we have like uh, I have not answered the 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 previous question in in the full scale because I wanted to highlight our kind of vision of equilibrium eventually. So <laughs> and it's it's somehow related to to this passion question because because yeah. uh, um, just uh, just also for for understanding of our community and everybody who is following us. Um, we uh, actually we quite stick to our uh, our initial vision and our initial strategy. So so mm -hmm. somebody maybe uh, thinks that equilibrium uh, is doing some something quite you know chaotic or in stealth mode. The, the layer is is truth. We usually do things in stealth mode because um, you know we we are. You know, we we don't like uh, this massive announcement before something particular is done, because uh, mm -hmm. it's it's very it's very it's very it's very it's very common to all the crypto space when the guys are announcing something and actually achievement maybe may 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 even not follow the these kind of promises. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we we are actually following the different approach. So we 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 are doing first. And then doing some sort of announcement, and I would say that 
our initial vision, Equilibrium, as the multi-chain framework for DeFi projects, not, not specifically just USDT as decentralized stablecoins, but other stuff. We, we actually stick to this approach. And um, the um, achievements that we are doing every, um, every, several, every two, two, three months with the big releases actually are very much inspiring me and inspiring our team. So with that, um, Kay Long uh, sent us a message and uh, said, happy birthday. Thank um, you very much. <laughs> are there any major changes after the birthday? Um, yeah, so look, um, uh, we, we have been talking about that with Zach. If you probably know, we, we had the podcast uh, a couple of weeks, a week ago. So uh, we, we've been discussing the further, further developments and stuff uh, happening on our side. Uh, so it's uh, already not not a secret that we are uh, looking at uh, closely at cross chain interoperability and uh, into integration of um, uh, kind of other blockchain, other assets into USDT as a collateral type, and uh, th- there is a lot of thing happening on the product side as well because we are going to release our brand new web interface. So it would be super exciting thing because it goes, goes from from specifically product product perspective. It will bring a lot of advantages because uh, for now we, we we just have the web interface uh, which allows to do quite basic things, just you know generate stable points and uh, do some monitoring stuff and everything. But after this release, uh, the scalability of the product will increase tremendously. So it would be super nice, very sleek application, uh, more looking like, you know, the application of your regular bank, uh, wherever bank you have. But I assume the, you have the best banks <laughs> with the slick applications. Because, <laughs> um, you know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> it's it's easy to be better than Wells Fargo. You know? <laughs> no comment. No comment. Yeah. But they all have their they all have their place. Um, but there is a big opening for for the world of decentralized finance and, and, and open banking to bring something new to the masses. And with the interface and some of the other planned upgrades, there's a big opportunity here for equilibrium. No. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, the thing is that all these DeFi applications, they're not uh, going um, for bare interfaces for, for, for some reason. They, they are mostly focused on just logics, some, you know, e- economy models, which are definitely exciting, all of them. Uh, but, I, you know, frankly, I have not seen um, uh, applications with the prominent user experience within it. Um, even, you know, the major ones. So I, I, I appreciate what what exactly MakerDAO, for example, is doing uh, for, for their customers. And I think their recent update of why this actually makes a lot of sense and it's, it improved the user experience uh, significantly. Um, but I think that it's, uh, it's still not enough. I think they, they can do better. Well, where do we go from here in terms of, of DeFi? Right. It was it was the term of the year for for the fourth quarter of 2019. It's 100 uh, percent the term of 2020 uh, thus far, um, and we're we're seeing it more than just terminology. Right? There's actual things happening, even including equilibrium. But where do we go from here in terms of the DeFi space, and, and how will equilibrium and EOS DT, to make it clear, how will those help expand the DeFi landscape? And play a role. Um, I, I think I, I see here uh, multiple directions where uh, things mm-hmm. can can actually uh, move to, and obviously the the first thing uh, which is um, 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 we anticipate is uh, the mm, the erasing the boundaries of blockchains. I mean uh, the uh, cross chain interoperability overall. Uh, and um, actually, this high-profile launch like Polkadot and uh, 
um, whatever, Definity, Cosmos eventually will be launched with their <coughs> cross-chain interoperable um, uh, network. <clears throat> that, that, that's something that uh, is definitely we are focusing on and something that we are uh, closely monitoring every every time and actually are uh, considering as uh, possible further um, uh, further developments as well. So in terms of um, uh, in terms of business uh, business perspective, so for sure uh, the interaction uh, among DeFi application will will be increasing. Mm -hmm. I think that there would be more and more. So basically, what we have we have seen uh, so far, we have seen that more and more projects were actually building these financial uh, primitives, right? Mm -hmm. So they were building some primitive things, bringing some concepts from uh, concepts from traditional uh, financial market to to crypto. And now I think the time for more sophisticated products that are actually built on top of these primitives, uh, this, the time of this actually has come. So the, we will be, we'll be seeing uh, the, the um, I would say, Cambrian explosion of, of projects built on top of the existing DeFi ecosystem, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I still think that we are uh, kind of in the very, very, very beginning of our path. And um, um, I would say that there's, there's still no that major players in DeFi space that could be unbeatable, for example, right? Mm -hmm. So even like MakerDAO, okay, so MakerDAO is, is, is fine, but I don't think that MakerDAO is unbeatable. Equilibrium is not unbeatable on EOS. Uh, whatever compounds is not unbeatable on Ethereum. So uh, we, we've seen, we've seen, uh, for example, uh, the skyrocketing of a project that actually went from the scratch of zero, zero locked value to how, how much, forty million or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's something that proves that uh, DeFi space is still is is developing and actually ready for more and more projects coming into that. I like it. So with that, what is the advantage with EOS DT um, in, in DeFi? And what are some of the differences or features compared to other tokens and platforms? Um, and is, there, is it possible to attain sufficient liquidity? Uh, this was a question from the community earlier. So what are the advantages of EOS DT and DeFi and some of the features and differences between what else is out there? Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, so look, um, f firstly, uh, quite obviously that um, Equilibrium and EOSDT is uh, the only decentralized stablecoin on EOS uh, for now. And if you're holding EOS cryptocurrency and you actually want to uh, to raise liquidity against your holdings in order to do something on the secondary markets, whether it's opening, like buying more EOS in order to have uh, leveraged uh, long position to your underlying collateral or uh, for some other purposes. For example, I've just heard from uh, one of our users that they're actually, what was he doing? He was uh, he was generating USDT, converting to USDC on Bancor, I guess. I can't remember whether USDC on the bank or maybe to die or something. So it doesn't matter. So to, to, to some stable coins. And then actually... He was withdrawing these stable coins to his regular bank account. So he basically got dollar cash on his account uh, through this uh, kind of scheme, you know. And wow. uh, yeah, so, so so basically, like like from from um, kind of user value from from, from uh, value proposition perspective, it looks like you are getting dollar cash loan at one percent APR. And by the way. To be uh, precise here, not not one percent APR. You're you're actually getting dollar cash at negative APR because currently Equilibrium allows users to stake their EOS and to get block producer rewards, right? Because uh, we are running our proxy, we have developed the mechanism where so-called not token holders can vote for block producers. So basically, select block producers, thirty of them. For our proxy, and these block producers are paying rewards, right? 
And uh, if you're staking EOS into the system, you're getting passive income. Uh, so the, this anticipated uh, passive income is currently 2.4%. That is, th th this was coming from block producers, and on top of that, you're getting a Rex reward, with, which is 0 0.3 something percent a year, and eventually it's like 2.7 percent that you're getting as a passive income, minus one percent that you're paying for your outstanding USDT, right? And eventually, you're getting minus 1.7 percent. So, you basically are the system is paying you for for getting dollar cash loan <laughs> for sure for sure uh, at some at some point in this uh, in this kind of chain where when you will be chain of operations when you, you will be converting or withdrawing cash to your regular bank accounts you will lose something some commission fees but eventually it will be something around zero so you basically you you take the loan and dollars for zero apr against your 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 initial eos collateral that's something it's that's what I'm excited about in DeFi space overall, you know, because some, maybe not that obvious solutions, but you can actually do some very, very practical in your regular life, right? So you, you can choose whether deposit your dollars on your saving account or whatever, you know, wherever in the bank, right? And get some zero point something percent or even pay for deposit if you're in Japan, right? Or you can can move funds into into DeFi projects and earn prominent percent uh, APR or something um, against your holdings, or whatever. So you, you you basically you you always have alternative. For sure, it's it's a kind of arbitrage opportunity, right? right? Because DeFi is not is not that uh, popular right now, right? So I mean, for sure, it's popular in crypto space. But what is what is crypto space? Ten million people. 15 I mean, million people, something. <laughs> it's, it's, it's literally nothing in the scale of the whole world, right? In the scale right. of the planet, right? right. And, uh, and, and compared to traditional banking system, for sure, since not everyone can um, actually aware how to move your dollars to, to crypto and then to deposit to, to some DeFi projects, uh, we, we still have this arbitrage opportunity. For sure, I think that if at some point even, you know, regular household can move its savings to, to crypto or to DeFi, DeFi space, it actually will mean two things. So first, there will be no more arbitrage opportunity. And second, it will be highly regulated. <laughs> <laughs> which, which there's been a ton to talk about, uh, right, in the current climate of things. The idea of the digital euro, digital dollar. We've got China, who just released um, or just rolled out a test pilot to um, citizens and, and some of the some of the bank customers uh, in China with a working uh, version of uh, of the digital yuan. Um, so much is happening in that space that regulation could could come. But um, jump into another question from James. Um, what? milestones are you looking forward to with equilibrium and eos dt what do you predict maybe some of the largest challenges in the future and how do you plan to address them uh very much depending on how long perspective this guy presumes <laughs> so so jane we're, let's uh let's go with uh here in the next six months uh, okay Awesome. Uh, sorry, sorry, James. If you're listening and you want it longer, <laughs> send us a note. But we're going six months. There you go. Yeah, yeah, for, for sure. Because uh, I, I recently I was uh, we we were submitting some application form and we were asked like for three year perspectives. <laughs> <laughs> six months. Six months. <laughs> okay. Okay. That, that, that's easy. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, first of all. Uh, w w what's the closest? Firstly, um, these um, updates for web interface. That's something I'm really very excited about. Secondly, we'll be launching uh, Bitcoin collateral backing USDT. This is something that to me seems huge because, you know, we expectedly... So we, we, we are we are the most liquid stablecoin on EOS for now, right? Mm -hmm. um, but 
if we embrace more collateral types, why we are doing that? So we basically are expecting to to get more liquidity into the system because you know if we uh, give the opportunity to our users not just collateralize to collateralize EOS, but also to collateralize something else from uh, from their portfolios, that expectedly will drive up the liquidity within uh, overall system. And uh, I personally think that this kind of second update, uh, the second milestone that we'll be achieving uh, within uh, this uh, half a year. Uh, by the way, it's not like half a year. It's uh, almost next week or something. So we are very close to the launch. <laughs> <laughs> That's a gift uh, to you, community. That's a birthday <laughs> present to you. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we in the, in the coming weeks, we'll be launching that into production for sure. And um, and, and I, another thing that I'm I'm really looking forward um, to is um, savings savings pool. So mm-hmm. savings pool is another product feature that we will be uh, developing uh, and releasing uh, quite soon. So basically, it's uh, the 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 pool where users could deposit their USDT. And uh, get um, uh, some interests uh, on on their holdings. So basically, that's uh, if you wish, you can you can you can call it also the gifts for for birthday <laughs> of, <laughs> of USDT. <laughs> but let, let let all the things that I will count be the, the gifts for birthday of USDT. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, so. Uh, if, if to just to look at further blockchain interoperability, that's something we are working on. I, I maybe I'm not in position to, um, you know, to uh, put up, pull up the the curtain of uncertainty around around our plans because you know, as I, as I mentioned, we always are doing things in stealth mode. Mm-hmm. But there is very, very, very exciting announcement coming up in, in within this half a year with regards to cross-chain interoperability within Equilibrium ecosystem. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I mean, just uh, uh, addressing yeah. this question. So yeah. um, several products updates, very, 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 very much uh, exciting and um, awaited. Uh, uh, just even maybe just on our side, but I expect from the community as well. But uh, the, the most focus would be on the cross-chain interoperability for us. And actually, actually um, improvements of user experience and um, adding more and more use cases uh, on our DeFi platforms. And, and what are some of the use cases today uh, for those who might not be aware on the platform? Um, so if someone's looking to use EOS, um, for instance, um, EOS DT, excuse me, which, uh, what are some of the current use cases uh, mm. that apply to them? So uh, the, the, the first uh, uh, obvious uh, use case is uh, actually staking. So you mm-hmm. basically can just use or stake mm-hmm. not tokens, by the way. Um, uh, may, maybe not everyone is aware of uh, opportunity to stake not not tokens, but uh, and I will I will highlight here um, how, how that actually works. So um, basically, everyone can just stake EOS on our smart contracts, and without further generating stable coins, just get uh, passive income on your mm-hmm. EOS. So this is very basic and uh, very kind of uh, essential scenario for for the users. The second scenario, as uh, as I mentioned, is staking not tokens. So basically, we have, if you probably know, the system or block register built. So basically, it's our governance contract. And if you have not tokens, you can simply stake your not tokens on this contract in order to get uh, passive income in not tokens. And by the way, the APR, the supply APR on NUT tokens is two times higher than APR on EOS currently. So compared to, to EOS, it's roughly five, five, five and five and a half percent something uh, a year. Uh, and current, uh, um, uh, current uh, EOS uh, supply APR, as I mentioned, is uh, roughly 2.6, 2.7 percent 
including Rex, Rex income, right? So basically, it's it's kind of the first uh, the first scenario. So staking not staking U- US. Uh, the the second scenario is actually generating stable coins, right? So w- what it exactly means you if you are culturalizing your EOS cryptocurrency on our smart contracts, you can decide yourself um, which which risk you can take if you, or if you you want to take in, in, in terms of generating stable coins and open, opening your position on uh, equilibrium smart contract, and you 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 simply are generating stable coins. So you basically, you're getting dollar, you're raising dollar liquidity against the collateral of your volatile uh, crypto assets. For now, it's just use cryptocurrency, but as I said, uh, other, other cryptocurrencies accepted uh, in obviously in decentralized way. Mm-hmm. Uh, within the framework as as the collateral, right? So you basically can not just culturalize news, but also culturalize your 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 bitcoins, which is the most kind of awaited thing. And uh, we are very much expecting to to answer the question, mm-hmm. right? And, and so in, in terms of possible. yeah, so in terms of in terms of um, uh, generating stable coins, for sure, uh, like from user perspective, you have uh, several options. So first, uh, the the very basic. One is to just to get dollar liquidity to withdraw to cash and to to enjoy very very cheap dollar liquidity at very low APR. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second option you can um, just for example let's assume that you are big on on EOS or Bitcoin or whatever uh, cryptocurrency you uh, you are big on, <laughs> and you you basically can generate stablecoin go into your favorite exchange, um, uh, generate. Uh, Actually, transfer your stable coins to this exchange and buy more uh, more cryptocurrency you want. And uh, from this perspective, you actually will be opening long leveraged position on your crypto. We call it pyramiding, by the way. Got it. Okay. Okay. And um, speaking of exchanges, Ding brought up a question for us. So. Uh, do do you have any plans uh, to list EOSDT on any um, centralized exchanges um, for, for providing additional liquidity? Um, that's from Ding. <clears throat> well, I would say that <clears throat> you know <laughs> we, we've been hearing these questions for a long time. So yep. for, for within all this year. We 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 always being asked uh, when is further listings of USDT. Here, here's the thing. Uh, so we basically we are not we never pay listings. Just also for you for your understanding. And we we definitely have a lot of proposals from a lot of exchanges to list us. Mostly all these exchanges are, um, I would say, uh, in uh, the se- the second tier exchanges and. Uh, they, they are suffering from lack of liquidity and uh, at some at some points maybe even wash trading uh, and we definitely don't want to 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 get list to get USD listed there so we are quite selective in terms of the exchanges and markets we want to open for for our stable coin mm-hmm. um, pro, in, t- in terms of that I would I would emphasize that we have several arrangements with uh, regarding further listings and these listings eventually will work out I'm hundred percent sure and we have uh, one very solid commitments on that um, unfortunately I cannot tell which exchange it would be exactly but I promise that within uh, coming coming months mm-hmm. uh, USDT will be listed on one quite well-known top centralized exchange. Okay. So we will open the market for, for USDT. Maybe that'll be a half birthday present. Uh, one and a half uh, years old uh, birthday present. Uh, I, I'm sure that <laughs> I'm, I'm actually expecting to be uh, something like one year and two months birthday. Something there like you that. go. <laughs> an, an early tease to what's yet to yeah, come. Yeah, exactly. So still, still young, still young, you know? Still young and growing. <laughs> I love it. 
<laughs> so uh, another another question we got from Holly. This goes back to what we were talking about around uh, cross chain um, bridging, interoperability. These key words that we've been continued to mention um, today. Uh, Holly asks if we have any plans to launch on additional EOS chains, and specifically something like Wax, W A X, for those who may not have heard of it. Good question. Good question. So. <clears throat> couple of things uh, we've been considering launching mm-hmm. on different uh, side chains of use uh, we've been talking to several several side chains um, federations whatever um, uh, foundations so uh, we, we've been talking to them uh, however my my thought on that's that's all these side chains they're for now, unfortunately, lacking liquidity. So mm-hmm. we, we definitely can can roll out USDT to any side chain because from um, like if to consider that from from technical uh, perspective, it's quite easy because all side chains they are more or less compatible to EOSIO chain. Mm-hmm. Um, but the thing is that okay, so imagine that we are we are launching um, launching USDT on Wax. Yep. Okay, so basically we are expecting to have um, this kind of collateral of WAX token uh, locked on smart contracts in order to generate WAX DT or something, right? right? You probably know that the market cap for stable coins like USDT or MakerDAO dies or some you know synthetic assets are actually the its uh, its market cap is is uh, the the definition of this market cap is coming from the market cap of underlying assets except this collateral right Mm -hmm. um so let's assume that we're we are accepting wax what's the current uh market cap for wax something like um 70 million or something right i may be wrong but i guess something like that so um I think that so we we have the market cap for EOSDT seventy million right right now on on EOS and it, it's actually um, defined by the market cap of EOS uh, so it's just small percentage of the market cap of underlying collateral asset right in terms of wax how how what would be the the market cap for wax DT? Seven hundred dollars, seven hundred thousand dollars, seven hundred grants or something. Does it make sense? I don't know. So, so it sounds like, um, I mean, something yeah, that's but, a case by case basis, right? Based on liquidity and 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 market cap. Yeah. What what what's, what definitely makes sense is to build the bridge between EOS and Wax chain, just mm-hmm. to um, to have the option to swap USDT into Wax chain. That's that's mm-hmm. definitely makes sense. And that, that, that's something that we are considering in terms of our further development. Um, no further, 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 particular further plans, by the way, but uh, it's something it. that we're thinking okay. about. Big question of, of, uh, of, of conversation to what's happening right now. So this is a question from Raj. Um, with the, the coronavirus or COVID-19 pandemic, um, which is, you know, affecting economies around the world, um, including the digital currency uh, markets, right? We've seen sharp declines in all of them across the board um, and continuing to see huge volatility around. How has the situation affected equilibrium? Um, any any problems, anything that we're looking to overcome or recover from? Um, and how do you see the management um, of equilibrium and EOSDT coming out of this uh, pandemic. So, has this affected equilibrium, and, and then how do we see this see us coming out of this? Look, um, uh, firstly, just uh, from uh, from practical uh, standpoint. So, you probably know that uh, the team of equilibrium is quite distributed around the globe, and we have. Um, uh, multiple team members sitting in, uh, in the U.S., in the U.K., China, whatever, and um, we, we we used to 
some remote communications, right? So it's nothing new to us. And from from operational perspective, we are uh, actually staying at the same uh, the same point we were staying before uh, on the virus uh, pandemic thing. <clears throat> In terms of uh, in terms of business, uh, for sure, uh, the global markets uh, downturn uh, affected um, uh, almost all industries and uh, actually crypto as well. Because uh, you know we see that, firstly, users are are pulling out their assets from uh, centralized exchanges, for example, and they're preferring right now to to keep their assets on their on their wallets. Uh, there were some some. Um, News on on uh, media uh, regarding that uh, I've seen recently. Also, I think that uh, overall um, regulatory climate will also be changing because uh, it's quite obvious that in uh, this kind of uh, moments of uncertainty, regulators are uh, starting uh, monitoring more close uh, closely the. The markets and uh, actually, I, I think like uh, as you probably saw the announcements by um, uh, FSB, uh, this uh, kind of boards of financial uh, financial thing in G G twenty, they uh, they actually <clears throat> are considering um, uh, they actually advising to central banks uh, to go for more regulations around stable coins, and I think that overall it's uh, coming from. Um, you know, uh, from uh, more attention drive, drive driven to a yet unregulated markets that uh, that actually to crypto, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. So we we definitely see more uh, more uh, things happening on the regulatory side for sure. Um, maybe some some restrictions, maybe some painful restrictions, um, specifically with regards to centralized stable coins, I assume. Because uh, uh, the you know the legal status of uh, more 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 common regular crypto like Bitcoin or Ethereum is uh, more or less uh, defined, and everybody everybody understands that it's like more kind of commodities, whatever. Uh, but in terms of stable coins, we still have some uncertainty, right? And uh, obviously, like <clears throat> it will be quite difficult for uh, regulators to go after. Uh, DeFi space because uh, if you're operating decentralized systems, you know it's uh, for, for sure there there is there behind every project there is some team right you you can actually go after this team, but uh, if it comes to the bigger projects, it's uh, more difficult to to understand how things working, who exactly is responsible, how how actually the liability divided uh, among all these people and everything. Uh, in terms of uh, centralized stable coins, I think here might be quite straightforward approach because uh, the uh, centralized stable uh, stable coins they have central point of failure, uh, which is uh, lying at the point of actually a connection between traditional financial system and uh, stable coins, right? So they basically can go after the mm, bank accounts where uh, all this uh, kind of uh, fiat money sitting, uh, backing this um, centralized stable coins. Yeah, we'll 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 see. Um, uh, on on the operational side, in equilibrium for sure, and I I, I guess that's a common situation to to the overall um, uh, DeFi DeFi space. Uh, we see a little bit calm. So. Um, um, you, you just I'm, I'm trying to um, so, so, so after after the this kind of crash of the markets on in March uh, we saw that uh, the total value locked in DeFi actually dropped down be- way below 1 billion uh, mm-hmm. that's uh, kind of a milestone we achieved uh, this year and uh, currently it's around 700 um, Seven hundred um, million dollars locked in uh, in DeFi, but you know it's uh, it's kind of um, uh, it's kind of uh, it's it's not it's not it's not increasing. It's uh, just staying at this uh, at these levels right now, right? And uh, from this perspective, we see uh, that uh, the um, we see less transactions than we we actually we we were. Absorbing before the uh, uh, the market crash uh, mm-hmm. in March. Mm-hmm. 
yeah. So it's it's in it's, it's some it's some it's some um, uh, from from some from, from some standpoint it's actually affects its operations. But I think that the market will be recovering, um, maybe not that soon, but at some point uh, this year for sure. So. And I I agree. I mean, we've seen again high volatility, but stable coins people seem to be taking a liking to uh, if. For many reasons, you know, some of those that you just mentioned and others is that this is a, a way people feel they can get into digital currencies um, across the board, that they can find new ways of earning additional passive income, as you mentioned, um, as there's a lot of different projects that are going on out there that can help um, mitigate some risk, uh, I guess you could say, in, in the traditional markets um, or just right. a level of uncertainty. But um, Chuck... Chuck uh, throws out a very good question for us. Um, shout out to to Chuck over at um, uh, Blockstart. Uh, does Equilibrium need to be fully backed by the currency it's pegged to? Uh, would what would the steps be to move towards a gold pegged stablecoin without needing to have gold <coughs> held by the system? Yeah, that's uh, that's an interesting question. So um, mm -hmm. you 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 probably um, uh, remember that uh, Libra Libra mm -hmm. stablecoin they wanted to, to to kick off with the stablecoin back to the baskets of um, of fiat currencies, right? Okay. So that was the initial initial concept. Um, for, from my perspective, like um, we, we we definitely we can we can launch any. Uh, currency or commodity backed stablecoin on top of equilibrium. So technically, we can do that at any time. It's uh, it's not an issue. Yeah. Uh, the question whether it would meet the demands of the market, right? Because um, uh, for regular users, using, uh, for example, gold backed stablecoin is something um, difficult, right? They regular regular people they don't understand what what, what is gold. How much gold costs? Kyle, how much gold costs? That's a question I can't answer right now. It's changing. <laughs> and you're right, because the gold yes. the materials market has different pricing. There's private and there's public, and there's public uh, management of it as well. But you're right. It's something that's fluctuating um, from time to time. But it is much more stable uh, in mm -hmm. some cases than the average asset that otherwise would be invested in. Right. But let, let's imagine that, okay, so let's imagine that um, all the stable coins back to traditional fiat currency will be banned in the world. Yep. So de definitely it would be it would be a tough moment for crypto space. Sunday. But uh, exactly, it would be the black black uh, the blackest the blackest day of uh, all crypto days we, we, we've seen so far, and um, but but we still we still have um, have the solution for that. So we basically mm -hmm. what, what what's what Jack saying that we can shift from dollar backed stablecoin to stablecoins back to either specific commodity which is uh, far from uh, traditional um, fiat fiat money. Or some basket of of uh, collaterals, uh, or the basket of, of assets. Like uh, I don't know, it might be it might be a basket of uh, whatever commodities like silver, gold, or whatever platinum. So I think that that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, but again, so we we always, we always have options in crypto. We're quite flexible. That's that's why crypto markets. Have uh, passed all these downturns, all market crashes, and everything, because uh, crypto markets is really resilient and uh, really flexible. So Mike did a uh, Mike on our team, who's uh, who's moderating and flagging questions with me from you guys on the community side. Did a fact check for us. We're just over seventeen hundred dollars uh, for 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 gold, by the way, at the moment. So okay, uh, thank Sounds you, Mike. Good. <laughs> Mike's keeping us on our toes. He's keeping us good. Um, next question from Zach. So jumping back, we talked about new features um, and specifically a new interface. 
on the EOSDT dashboard. So what new features in data vis visualizations will be included in the new dashboard? Um, and then I've got a few other questions that just rolled in as well. So we'll start with that. What new features in digital, or excuse me, data visualizations will be included in the new dashboard? Look, so, so firstly, there would be the dashboard, because now we don't have any dashboards. We have uh, some separated uh, products uh, uh, across the website. Now it will be everything integrated into one, one dashboard where, can you, where can you, you can see the big picture, what's going on with your um, profile within the system, how safe is it, it is, how, how things going with the culturalization level, uh, and what's uh, what's the most interesting, I guess, to all our our users is how much profit you get on your uh, or if you wish passive income on your assets, right? So that's that, that's the indicator or metrics, whatever uh, that is very much anticipated by the community. We always receiving the questions regarding where I can monitor my incomes. So eventually, you will have these metrics right in the center of your beautiful dashboard so secondly you will have all these products uh, in the line um uh, so basically lending borrowing um okay well um borrowing stable coins right generating stable coins secondly um further products like savings that will be also launched launched soon savings then uh, some other products that will be also releasing on the top of equilibrium will also also be uh actually um, on this dashboard. So you always can monitor what's, what's going on. <clears throat> so also you will see the full transparent history uh, of your positions and all the transactions you ever, ever performed uh, on, on, on the equilibrium framework, right? Because um, it's obvious that all the transactions are recorded on the blockchain and you mm -hmm. definitely can go to uh, Block Explorer uh, search for your transactions and uh, just fetch this data yourself. But I, I guess the regular user, you will not do that, right? And we eventually collect all this data and uh, we will present it to the users within within new 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 web interface. Um, there would be other product features. Um, I mean, I would say products uh, built on top of Equilibrium. Um, that I have not highlighted within our conversation, but mm -hmm. trust me, they're coming coming along and they will be also placed into this slick web interface and you will have tremendous user experience. So switching gears real quick, another question we had is on equilibrium framework. Um, so right now it's a it's a tool that people can use to, to build in their, their DeFi applications and, and projects. Um, why would someone use this? Uh, it was the question, right? Um, there's plenty of, of products out there to build on top of or to leverage to, to build your application. Why the equilibrium framework? What makes it um, so powerful in the space to use? <clears throat> so from a developer perspective, uh, I would say that uh, there are not all the features uh, out there now, for now, we are expecting some other cool things uh, be out there. But even for now, you can utilize some modules, if you wish, uh, of the equilibrium framework, like very, very, very agile price feeds. You can take it from there and just plug into your DeFi project. Um, we, on our side, so basically what, what we were creating, we were creating the framework that will be useful for our, our needs to leverage it and to deliver more exciting DeFi products on the market. But again, so some parts of the framework are, are already open source. You can take it from there. Uh, but there, there will be more and more developments um, uh, coming out and actually open source on our um our GitHub. So watch, watch after that um, and ask us questions if you have any. We'll be happy to support you with your further developments. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's super, 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 super cool. Yeah. So two last questions and then we'll get to the lightning round. Um, Equilibrium is built around EOS. Um, 
what were some of the roadblocks or challenges um, that have come in building in the EOS space, right? We've talked a lot about the advantages, but um, what roadblocks have, have you hit in, in growing equilibrium over this past you know, year and plus? Look, I think they're a very good question, by the way, because, uh, you know, definitely uh, there are a lot of advantages of use we've been talking about, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, there, are, there are several mm, challenges that we have faced uh, uh, within our uh, kind of year of EOSD development, not just development, by the way, but, but running, running the business, right? <clears throat> One of them... I would say that uh, the, it is kind of BS around use overall in the entire community. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I, I would say that uh, specific, specifically Ethereum focus guys, they are very, very BS about use. And it, it is very, very challenging if you want to. So j just just a quick example. So uh, you probably know there is a listing of DeFi uh, DeFi applications called DeFi Pulse, right? Yes. They're 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 listing. So it's 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 basically the list which actually attracts uh, the most traffic of all this listing of this kind. So we approached these guys several times, asking why want you list USDT because if you list USDT, it actually will take the, I guess, ninth or tenth row in your on your list. The response was like that. Hey guys, we are considering EOS as a centralized system. There is no DeFi there, presumed, because uh, you, you, you basically cannot deliver really decentralized finance application on top of centralized system, or if you were centralized database, as they call it. Um, so um, th th that's a kind of perception. For sure, we, we, we unfortunately don't have enough resources to educate people about EOS. I know EOS, like we, we have in EOS, we have tremendous community, a lot of very smart, very nice guys, a lot, a lot of good teams prominent, prominent um, software engineers, developers, um, very, very nice crowd. Uh, I, I, I personally, I enjoy uh, attending all EOS-focused uh, conferences or events because there are a lot of uh, open-minded people I, I love to talk to. Um, and unfortunately, we cannot bring uh, this um, kind of mindfulness outside EOS, EOS, uh, EOS sandbox for some reason. I don't it as a project was to educate the, the whole crypto universe about, about, about EOS or about, about um, EOS community, how things working there. I think that somebody, I will not maybe point out particular or on you know people or organizations, but somebody out there should take lead on that, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that this somebody, they actually uh, have taken the right approach. They have, uh, they're, they're, getting, they're getting more open to the community right now. Hopefully, it will, it. hopefully they, it, will, it will work out. But I think that it's one of the biggest challenges, this BS and, um, you know, this kind of educational thing for, for the entire community around here. So that's something that we are missing. Awesome. All right. Lightning round. We've got about three questions left. One, one quick, uh, quick one minute answers or less. Uh, yes, so no. We can get to yes, no. Yes, yes, no. Yes, no. Uh, a, a great question that actually came from YouTube. Again, thank you. Shout out everybody for, for tuning in live with us. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, appreciate question, it, mate. Yeah, yeah. You, this is all for you, buddy. Um, question that came in, we were talking about collateral, right? We've talked about BTC. We've talked about other um, digital currencies. We've talked about materials being gold. Question came up, what about digital art? Is something like a digital collectible or a digital asset, big, big basket, um, like digital art, is that something that could be collateral in the future for, for EOSDT?
Um, oh, we lost you for just a second. Yeah, we've we've gone almost this entire show without a blip, and that was the first blip. So there we go. So <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry, man. You were you were you you were cutting up. I actually, I, I, as I get the question, the question was whether we're considering. Um, whether we are considering the basket of digital collateral or some other digital collateral besides crypto for USDT, was it the question? Right. Yeah. For example, digital art was the specific question. Could digital art be a collateral item? Um, look, uh, look. I think that overall it might be. But the question: How would you assess the value of this collateral? That's the biggest challenge here. Um, I've heard of some projects that potentially, like uh, on the basis of some neural network, supposed to be um, assessing the value of particular pieces of art, right? So basically, uh, the, this neural, neural network supposed to be learned on this huge data set for different art pieces, just to figure out what might be the potential. Uh, potential value of particular uh, piece of art. So if there will be some mechanism which will be unbiased on one side and acceptable by, um, you know, market participants as uh, the proper, you know, um, evaluation of, uh, of uh, the value of particular uh, piece, piece of art, that, that makes sense. Otherwise, it would be very, very difficult because uh, how would you get the objective price of, of the piece of art. It's very difficult. That it is. That's, that it is. Last question. Where do we go from here? And specifically around decentralized finance. You know, there's a lot of focus that we have at Equilibrium around this industry. It's being talked about like crazy. We've had tons of great questions around us today. 60 seconds or less. Where do we go from here? Uh, Difficult question. So uh, it's just my opinion. <laughs> That's this. This all, is all a question opinion. for you. <laughs> all for you. Uh, I hopefully I will not be get get, get getting quotes on that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> I think that um, uh, at some point, eventually, institutional money will come into crypto space. At some mm -hmm. point, we've been waiting for that for years. And eventually, it will happen. Um, I was attending the last conference, crypto conference. I was attending just before the lockdown was in Frankfurt. Uh, it was, you know, quite interesting one because there was no uh, Burning Man crypto crowd like we usually see on different <laughs> conferences like that. Just, you know, guys in the white collars with, uh, you know, in, in quite expensive suits from uh, enterprise um, organizations, from banks, from investment banks, from some institutional guys, those guys who, whom we are waiting for in crypto space for, for, for a long time, they were discussing crypto stuff. And this was amazing because the topics were around enterprise solutions for banks, like uh, enterprise uh, uh, scale custodies, um, treasury management solutions, um, tokenization uh, platforms. And, um, you know, I, I even remember the guy from Luxembourg, he was just, he took 10 minutes just to explain everything, just briefly, how regulation in Luxembourg looks like. <laughs> that was pretty amazing. Just 10 minutes, guy explained everything in the, in such detail that we understood everything very, very, very particularly, how things working in Luxembourg. So we were actually almost ready to go there to open the company. <laughs> uh, so it's, 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 it's one of the directions, by the way. So probably crypto markets will be um, more and more institu um, moving into this kind of institutional direction towards institutional customers. Uh, and, um, you know, the question, whether this crypto sandbox with this existing crypto assets would exist in this new world of enterprise blockchain solutions? Well, I don't know. I think definitely the <clears throat> most popular crypto assets like Bitcoin, Ethereum, um, hopefully others, of course, EOS, 
um, they will they will they will stay here for a long time. Uh, but whether others assets will be here or they will be just washed off the markets, I don't know. And which assets would be this new blockchain space uh, for, um, for with actually uh, incorporated for uh, this um, institutional customers or enterprises will exist? Um, I mean, whether whether they will accept the existing crypto assets, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe it will be something very different. TBD, TBD. And with that, <laughs> big, big happy anniversary and happy birthday to you, Alex, to the entire team and to the entire Equilibrium and EOSDT communities. This is an amazing uh, feat and milestone that, uh, that you've reached and big, big congratulations uh, to you and the entire team. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Kyle, for having me here. Uh, actually, I, I apologize for uh, leveraging my position to be here in the <laughs> even at the anniversary of of EOSDT. But it was it was a pleasure. Uh, it was a pleasure to answer all these uh, vibrant questions from the community. And thank you very much. And we are looking forward to having you guys uh, with us. Uh, please uh, send over your feedbacks because uh, every feedback is very, very valuable for us, and we are always taking them into account in our further in our further development. Um, and um, yeah, looking forward to achieving other amazing milestones with uh, Equilibrium, USDT, and other products on, on top of our framework. Well, and thank you, Alex. And also a big shout out to Mike and Emily who have been flagging questions back and forth for Alex and I in the Telegram chat on YouTube and social media today. So guys, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, to you, the community. And just, just about, yeah, yeah. And we, we, should, we, should go, we should go for go EOS, you know? The last ah. time Zach, Zach, Zach caught me on his podcast. <laughs> we need to go for go EOS. <laughs> One, <laughs> two, three. Go. go EOS. There go we go. EOS. Go, go EOS, EOS, everybody. Thank you so much to you, the community. We couldn't have done this without you from beginning to today and the big milestone. This episode, Alex and the team, this project, it's exciting, and we thank you very much. As we always do, we're going to end here. Alex and I, Mike and the team, will we'll sync with Alex to pick the best question of the day. Mike will follow up with you in our Telegram chat and let you know who won, and we'll take care of you offline with a little prize uh, and a big, big thank you. Also join us here in two weeks on April 29th uh, at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time for another chat with our upcoming guests, which we'll soon be announcing uh, here in the coming days. But again, Alex, thank you. If you've got any questions, feel free to check out Equilibrium EOSDT online. Any questions, drop in the Telegram chat. Absolutely. Thank you very much.